All right, Talia. I literally just, just, just finished the Admats paper. My views on the paper it was nice. Um, the good things about the paper, I think CXC really did a good job on this paper in terms of examining students on Admats for the syllabus. The questions were straightforward and easy and doable once as long as you study, as long as you studied and you do pass papers. So. And another thing was the marks distribution. They come good with the, how they distribute the marks. The paper was nice, how it was structured, they distribute the marks well. I thought that was good as well, so that there was something for everybody. It was that paper that once you study, you, have, you stood a good chance of passing. Getting a three or two. Getting a one in that paper would pose a challenge. So here's why. This is the two main problems I had with that paper. Yeah? Um, time. Time was a time was an issue. There's a lot. You see, there was easy stuff straightforward stuff but there was so much of it to do in that paper so that time was a issue i hope somebody in CXC sit down and write that exam and structure it with time and they check it out and make sure everything flow good because i find the time for a student um in form five was a little demanding even if it's that much it was a little demanding at that time so uh, how many of you all run out of time am i is this just me is this just people who are messaging me anybody run out of time in this exam let me know and before I start the solution, I'll just give you the next concern I had was um, with two questions. There's some ambiguity in the questions. Um, how it was phrased, I didn't really know what they were asking for. And I think there was an error in one of the questions where they were asking for a maximum point and it should be a minimum point. Uh, I don't know. They will let me know when I read the questions. By the way, I just do the solutions. So I didn't really get vetted by another teacher or checked by anybody else. So if there's any if there's any mistakes and I realize when I post it up, I'll just post it in the comments. Like um, last time I post up the math solution, I left out a negative sign and I mix up some fraction thing. Cause I'd be so hurry to just post it up. If there's any mistakes, I will just leave it in the comment section or it'll be on my Instagram. Alright, enough talk. Let's get into the paper. So question one, given that f of x da da da, we had to do a little inverse thing and straightforward inverse. Start off nice, everybody smile when they see that question and that was the answer there. The only trick really there is that you should specify that x is greater than negative 4 in the inverse. That way you don't get anything negative coming on there and they already said that x is greater than 0 up here for f of x. So for f inverse, if you run it through, you'll see that x should be more than negative four so i don't know if a mark will drop out if you don't write that um the next part you need to sketch the graph straightforward thing a reflection in the line f of x equal x or y equal x um and this is how the sketch will look nice 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 and uh, you could put in this line too to just make things look pretty then you have to derive a polynomial you're going good uh, good here too um if you have these roots well you know you should use these factors and there's also a but for this we just assume that a is equal to one so we move along with that and we get a nice little p of x here check that and see if you'll get that um then there was a traditional logs question a it had a trick in this logs question what should they do right here where k and a are constants k and a are the constants as like Oh, that's going to catch people there, but K and A are the constants. You know what that means? That means that when you take logs and you arrange it up into the form Y equal MX plus C, that M is really the, the constant log of A and that X here represents T, right? So, yeah, watch out for that. Um, well, you can't really watch out for it now. Just know whether you're going to get it or not, right? So, um, it wouldn't really come into play here. It would come into play in this question where they ask you to state an expression for the gradient. So, the gradient here is log of a. So, yeah. So, you have to watch that. Or you could write it like this. And they say expression, but I write an uh, equation kind of set up here. But any one of these should be good enough. I don't think they're looking for um, y2 minus y1 is equal to um y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 earlier so yeah next part what we had by do, 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 a complete in the square but notice a was negative a was negative here so you just complete the square like normal let me move on um and then you have to draw the graph this graph come out quite down here up to now i still feeling 
worried about that graph. How that graph looking quite down there, boy. So yeah, but I check it over. Um, I ain't really send it to anybody and vet it with anybody. But yeah, that that's how the graph come out. So cool. Well, if that's the graph, that's the graph. And it's a maximum point since A is negative, right? So that's all right. And on the graph, we indicate the maximum point and we indicate the intercept. Right there, maximum point right here, intercept, and all right, okay. Um, by the way, I'll do work in a little more structure than this, right? I just, you know, energy, GP. Okay, so this GP question is when I start to realize that the question's straightforward, but that the trick is like killing us with time. Because this was all right to work out your setup equations. Third term is that, first and second term add up is that. Yeah, work out what is R, you work out what is E, you get your answer here, but um like this stick up they stick up some time or you could use the um you could use the formula here i just add up the terms because i realize it's half so 150 25 12 and a half going down like that i wonder if i get a pattern to let me know and then th this was a next straightforward question but it was long as well because how, how it set up alpha and beta squared some of the roots thing straightforward everything you se you separate them up you get your sum of your roots, you get your product of your roots, you put them in, ting, 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 you get through. And then you start to realize I'm like, feeling like you're behind time because you look and you just reach question three. And then this is the next straightforward question, but this was a quickie. Um, you get your radius, you plug it in x minus x1, y minus. I didn't really put the formula here, right? So you plug it in that. Check through it. This is not a, this is not a tutorial, as I always say. This is a... Um, solutions with your I just to check over you will see how much marks I think you get all right determine whether the following pair of lines are parallel and next quickie here um just rearrange and then compare the gradients where they should be m m1 this was negative one this was nah, not parallel then you do a little vectors question magnitude first you need to find a b using the triangle of vectors for a b and o um for o b and o a so you do that and then you get that and then you get your um magnitude using using that formula there right so um the angle a o b given your answer to the nearest whole number angles all right so you use the dot product law and you get through it angle like this and when you set up your vectors this is what i would do i would set up my vectors oe and and ob kind of accurate to what they are and just make sure that my angle looking around what it should be and yes it was around 90 degrees so 85.6 i get with that watch this before forget to see that at the end of the video let your friends in form four and form three subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be running a maths lessons online free everything laid out fun informative comprehensive entire syllabus motivational everything just here on this channel starting right after the exam season in June so let your friends subscribe to the channel and you will have take it all the way to January to June next year January June next year so that you'll be ready to kill them off in a maths exam to be honest, I think every secondary school student should sign up to this channel, even if you're in university too. So private students, form three, form four students, now is the best time to subscribe, sign up, you're ready to mash up maths. You're going to go through this and obviously I'll do a little bit of other subjects as well, run through some tough stuff in other subjects, but sign up, you're ready to mash up January, mash up June if you're doing it. Don't give up on maths, now is the best time, best opportunity to run through this for you. So let's go back to the solutions. Alright, so then you need to prove identity. To prove the identity, there was two skills. There's the scale where you take this and you find um difference of two squares here to group it up into one formula no? um, into one fraction I should say and then you you separated this one into this well that's what I did I I chose the left hand side you could choose the right hand side too but it's always easier to simplify two fractions into one than to take this and separate them out and thing so yeah so that's that and then when you reach this state you should know to separate the costs and okay let's not talk about it too much but yes this is what you do uh we move along coordinates of stationary points that's when dy dx is equal to zero find that straightforward no problem there and nature okay nature find the 2y dx squared 
when it's positive you get a minimum when it was negative you get a maximum no problem there differentiate y is equal to 2x okay so this is a product and a chain rule involved here but i was so speeding through this i didn't bother to use the chain rule i just differentiate it um with a kind of shortcut i they have the chain rule right so yeah so you use the chain rule there you differentiate you use your product rule you differentiate you get that answer in the end check over these answers people i just rush it down make sure it's correct showing using integration there that the finite area of the curve y is equal to sine x in the first quadrant bounded by that blah, blah. why am i reading the question okay so you had to find a definite integral for this and a definite integral for that and just to show that one is less than the other okay straightforward The finite region in the first quadrant and then they come and hit you this long question here a long integration question here to use so they were really testing your algebra skills how quick you could get through these questions right which i think may not be ideal for what you should be tested in an admat student you should test the algebra as well as how much you know just how much they actually know right so anyhow i got this for my answer um in cubic units you can leave your answer in terms of pi or Hit them down to decimals and uh, you should actually say to two decimal places there if you do that anyhow so a curve yeah all right so for part c we had a we had a curve with a gradient of that they give us that as the gradient so now we need to integrate the fine equation of the curve we will find we'll end up finding we'll end up finding c um we'll end up having a c but um constant of the integration but we'll get rid of that by substituting this point here into the equation bam you get your answer here yeah move on then you had a little all right so this is where you had some choices i would have gone with question eight because um this had a little problem in it anyhow so this part is easy you get your median you get your quartiles you get into quartile range ting 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 then you do your box and whisker plot ting 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 you say it positively skewed because of this long right whisker there there were no outliers using your formula q1 minus um 1.5 of the interquartile range and, and q3 plus 1.5 no outliers and then this question was a kind of you see i didn't finish the question because i was like what are they asking in this question anybody did this question and was understood what they were asking ask ask king ask king asking ask what was asked in this question all right so so we had a was it that what the person who wrote this question if you are watching this the person who write this question and send it to cx if you're watching this video right now email me at coinspringer at gmail.com and let me know why it is you really trying to ask in this question with them um the, this tree diagram my main problem with my main issue in it was insecticide a b and c applied on lots q r s was it that a was applied to q b was a what they applied to all what, what what going on what going on what you really want us to do all right so if it was that they were applied to all randomly then you have the lots then you apply the fertilizer or is it we supposed to apply the foot have the fertilizer here then the lots what really going on in this question i just don't know so i don't like how you write this um the probability so if it was like this you would have just finished all this um using this right and you have your successful you have your unsuccessful whatever that was three marks so if you do this question most likely i'm not too sure if you're collecting that three marks because it's just so ambiguous what they want in this question all right so the next part of the question made up for it it was really beautiful and insecticide selected at random determining probability that is unsuccessful so you add up your unsuccessful probabilities and you should know how to do that this is not a tutorial and you get 0.2 um you could do it this way too you could just add up the unsuccessful and divide by three so you find the average of unsuccessfulness <laughs> all right so next person um the regular die all this part in the probability was beautiful independent events right it doesn't matter what happened in the first die so the answer is one six and this one two in a row means a six by six so that's one thirty six and then all right so number eight was the next beautiful question and we just we just talk about this whole thing in the last video i did on atmos or the last or second the last time around there so you had to determine your velo velocity so you know you just differentiate to get velocity and you do your thing and you differentiate and then you substitute t equal to and you get what it was and then 
you substitute the values of t when it, the particle at rest no you substitute v is equal to zero because that's when it at rest no velocity you get your t's then you get the distance between the points by substituting for t inside the equation so you get your distance notice that your distance must be positive because you don't want to put a negative answer there because distance now nah, not nah displacement that's all so um then the time uh, this is a part of the question i don't know if i overlook something uh, you know, I've given CXC the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe I just rushed this down too fast and I take time to consider what really going on. But anyhow, the time at which the maximum velocity occurs, to me, there would be a minimum velocity, not a maximum velocity with this. Right? So, I don't know. Anyhow, so yeah, that would be when um, dv dt is equal to zero. So, you differentiate again, you get this. You put that equal to zero and you get this answer here. Or if they really meant the time at which the maximum velocity occurs, that is undefined um, in this current state. Because the curve is a minimum, so it will go like this, right? So maximum going up to infinity, bro. Anyhow, let you go. On um, a bus starts from rest. A bus starts from rest. Ting, ting, ting. This was, this was, question was just food. So you should have do this question probably first. If you're running out of time and you look in the back and you see this question, you should have just speed it down. Um, you just do a little distance formula, you get your graph, and then you get your average speed. That was three, 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 two, three. Easy max, three, two, three. All right, so that's it. Let me know how you think you do in the exam. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think this was the exam. You should have get three or two. Yeah. Serious. Because it's just straightforward. You could have collect some max. So probably it's hard to get one, as I said. But easy to pass so and you have multiple choice coming up so good luck in that as well those who are doing physics i'll try and do a few couple video on physics remember i should only be posting one video a day i try to post two three four videos a day and doing all my other stuff lessons um job family is insane but it's for the people it's for the people